Um, and I said we'd make the uh, power wall and the power pack. And we made the power wall and power pack. In fact, the, the power pack is um, now deployed in massive grid scale utility systems around the world, um, in, including the, the, the largest operating battery projects in the world that at uh, above 100 megawatts. Um, and in the next, or probably by next, in the next year, two years at the most, we expect to have a giga, gigawatt scale battery project uh, completed. So all these things, I said we'd do them, we did it. I said we'd do it, we did it. We're gonna do the robo-taxi thing too. Only criticism, and it's a fair one, and sometimes I'm not on time. <laughs> but I get it done, and the Tesla team gets it done. So what we're gonna do this year uh, is we're gonna reach uh, combined production of 10,000 a week between SX and 3. Feel very confident about that. Uh, and we feel very confident about being peach and complete with self-driving. Um, next year, we'll expand the product line with Model Y and Semi. Uh, and we expect to have the first operating robo-taxis next year with no one in them next year. It's always difficult to like when, when things are on an exponential, at, at an exponential rate of improvement, it's, it's, it's very difficult to kind of wrap one's mind around it because we're used to extrapolating on a linear basis. But when you've got massive amounts of, uh, of like as the hardware, uh, massive amounts of hardware on the road, the, 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 the cumulative data is increasing exponentially. The software is getting better at an exponential rate. Uh, I feel very confident in predicting uh, autonomous robo-taxis for Tesla next year. Not in, all not in all jurisdictions, because we won't have regulatory approval everywhere, but I, I, I'm confident we'll have at least regulatory approval somewhere literally next year. Um, so any customer will be able to add or remove their car to the Tesla network. So we expect this to operate um, it's some, it's sort of like a combination of maybe the Uber and Airbnb model. So if you own the car, you can add or subtract it to the Tesla network, and Tesla would uh, take uh, 25 or 30% of the revenue. Um, and, uh, and then in places where there aren't enough people sharing their cars, we would just have dedicated uh, Tesla vehicles. Uh, so we'll sh we'll sh when you use the car, we'll show you our ride-sharing app. So you'll be able to, be able to summon the car from the parking lot, get in, and go for a drive. It's really simple. So you just take the same Tesla app that you currently have, we'll, just do, we'll just update the app and add a summon, summon Tesla or, or commit your car to the fleet. So it's either summon, summon your car or add, summon a Tesla or add, your, add or subtract your car to the fleet. You'll be able to do that from your phone. So we see um, potential for smoothing out the demand distribution curve. Um, and having the car operate at a much higher utility than an all car would operate. So like, typically the use of a car uh, is about 10 to 12 hours a week. So most people will drive um, one and a half to two hours a day, typically 10 to 12 hours a week of total driving. But if you have a, um, a car that can operate autonomously, then most likely you could probably, most likely you'd have that car operate for a, a third of the week or longer. So there are 168 hours in a week, so probably you've got something on the order of 55 to 60 hours a week of operation, maybe a bit longer. Um, so the, the fundamental utility of a vehicle increases by a, a factor of five. So you can look, look at this from a macroeconomic standpoint and say just, if, if this was like some, if we were operating some big simulation, <laughs> if you could upgrade your simulation to increase the utility of cars by a factor of five, that would be a f massive increase in the um, economic efficiency of the simulation, just gigantic. So um, we'll do Model 3 S, S3 and X as taxis, but um, we, we made an important change to our leases. So if you lease a Model 3, you don't have the option of buying it at the end of the lease. We want them back. If you buy the car, you can keep, you, you can keep it, but if you lease it, you have to give it back. 
and as, as I said, where in any locations where there's not enough to, uh, supply for sharing, uh, we'll, Tesla will just make its own cars um, and add them to the network in that place. So the current cost of ro Model 3 robo-taxi is um, less than $38,000. We expect that number to improve over time. Um, and we're designing the cars. The cars currently being built are all designed for a million miles of operation. So the drive units are designed, for, uh, designed and tested and validated for a million, un million miles of operation. The current battery pack is about maybe 300 to 500,000 miles. Uh, the new battery pack that's probably going to production next year is designed explicitly for a million miles of operation. The entire vehicle, battery pack inclusive, um, will, will, is designed to operate for a million miles with minimal maintenance. maintenance. So we'll actually be adjusting uh, tire design and uh, re really optimizing the car for a hyper-efficient robo-taxi. And at some point, you won't need steering wheels or pedals, and we'll just delete those. So as, as, as these things become less and less important, we'll just delete parts. Just They won't, they won't be there. Um, if you say, like, probably two years from now, we, 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 we make a car that has no steering wheels or pedals. And if we need to accelerate that time, we can always just delete parts. Easy. Um, yeah, probably, say, long term, three years, rubber taxis with, with eliminated parts. It maybe it ends up being $25,000 or less. And you want a, a super efficient car so that the electricity consumption is very low. So we're currently at four and a half miles per kilowatt hour, but we can, we'll improve that to five and beyond. And there's just really no, no company that has the full stack integration. We've got the, the vehicle design and manufacturing. We've got the computer hardware in-house. We've got the in-house software development um, the, and, and AI. And we've got by far the biggest fleet. It's extremely difficult, not impossible perhaps, but extremely difficult to catch up when Tesla has 100 times more um, miles per day than everyone else combined. This, this, is, these, these today, this is the cost of running a gasoline car, or the, the average cost of running a car in the US is taken from AAA. So it's currently about 62 cents a mile, um, you know, uh, 13 and a half miles from 50 million vehicles, adds up to two trillion a year. Um, these are literally just taken from the AAA website. Um, the cost of ride sharing is, uh, according to Uber and Lyft, is two to three dollars a mile. Um, the cost to run a robo taxi, we think, less than eighteen cents a mile. And and dropping. Like this is this is, this would be current. This is current cost. Future cost will be lower. You say, what would be the probable gross profit from a single robo taxi? Um, we think probably something on the order of thirty thousand dollars per year, and we expect that we're, we're, we're literally designing we're, we're, we're designing the cars the same way that commercial semi trailer semi trucks are designed. Commercial semi trucks are all designed for a million mile life, and we're designing the cars for a million mile life as well. So no, in nominal dollars, that would be you know, a little over $300,000 over the course of 11 years. It might be higher. I think these consumptions are actually relatively conservative. And this assumes that 50% of the miles driven are, are there's nothing, are, are not useful. So this is only at 50% utility. By the middle of next year, uh, we'll have over a million Tesla cars on the road with full self-driving hardware feature complete uh, at a reliability level that we would consider uh, that no one needs to pay attention. Meaning you could go to sleep in your, from our standpoint, if you fast forward a year, just a little, maybe a year, maybe a year and three months, uh, at, but next year for sure, we will have over a million robo-taxis on the road. The fleet wakes up with an over-the-air update. That's all it takes.
you say, what, what is the net present value of a, of a rover taxi? Probably on the order of a couple hundred thousand dollars. So buying a Model 3 is a good deal. <laughs> Any questions? I mean, in our own fleets, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I guess long term we have probably on the order of 10 million vehicles. Um, I mean, our production rates generally, if you look at our compound annual production rate since 2012, which is like the, that's our first full year of Model, Model S production, we went from 23,000 vehicles produced in 2013 to, uh, around 250,000 vehicles produced last year. So in the course of uh, five years, uh, we increased output by a factor of 10. I would expect that something similar occurs over the next five or six years. Um, as for sharing, sharing versus, I don't know. The, the nice thing is that essentially customers are fronting us the money for the car. It's great. So um, in terms of the one thing is the snake charger, I'm curious about that. And also, uh -huh. um, how did you determine the pricing? It looks like you're undercutting the average Lyft or Uber ride by about 50%. So I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about the, the pricing strategy. Uh, sure. Uh, we, we expect the, the, the to, to uh, um, obviously solving, solving for the snake charger is, is, is pretty straightforward it's, from a vision standpoint. It's a, like a known situation. Any, any kind of known situation with, with vision is like, like a charge port, it's trivial. Um, so, um, so yeah, the cars would just automatically park the, and automatically uh, plug in. Um, there would be no one, no human supervision required. Um, yeah. So, sorry, the other part was a pricing. Uh, that we just threw some numbers on there. I mean, I think it's like definitely plug in whatever pricing you think makes sense. Uh, we just kind of randomly said, okay, maybe a dollar. Um, and the thing is, like, it's, it's, there's like on the order of two billion cars and trucks in the world. So robo taxis will be in extremely high demand for a very long time. And from my observation thus far is that the, the auto industry is very slow to adapt. I mean, like I said, there's still not a car on the road that you can buy today that is as good as the Model S was in 2012. Um, so that suggests um, a pretty slow rate of adaptation for the car industry. Um, and so probably a dollar is conservative for the next 10 years. Because like, people sort of think, like, like, there's like actually not enough appreciation for the difficulty of manufacturing. Manufacturing is insanely difficult. Um, but a lot of people I talk to think like, if you just have the right design, you can like instantly make as much of that thing as the world wants. This is not true. <laughs> um, it's extremely hard to design a new manufacturing system for new technology. Um, I, I mean, Audi's having major problems manufacturing e-tron, and they are extremely good at manufacturing. And if they're having problems, what, are, what about others? Um, so the you know, there's, there's on the order of two billion cars and trucks in the world, on the, on the order of about 100 million units per year of production capacity of vehicles, but, but only of the old design. Um, it will take a very long time to convert all of that to uh, full self-driving cars. And they really need to be electric because the cost of operation of a gasoline diesel car is much higher than an electric car. The, so uh, uh, any, 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 any robotax that isn't electric will absolutely not be competitive. Um, I, I think there will be sort of a phone home uh, thing where if the car gets stuck, uh, it'll just phone home to, to Tesla and uh, ask for a solution. Uh, things like being pulled over for, you know, by a police officer, that's, that's easy for us to program in. That's not a problem. Um, the, it, it will be possible for somebody to take over using the steering wheel, um, or at least for some period of time, and then probably down the road, uh, We'll just cap the steering wheel so that, are, that there's no steering control. We'll just take the steering wheel off, put a cap on, and if you in the long, you know, give it like a couple of years. So it starts to become remarkably lifelike. It's like quite eerie, actually. It's like the car just starts behaving like a person.